Well, we are starting out this Monday with some legal info that we all need to know. Meg is right now is at McIntyre Law Offices with Attorney Noble McIntyre. Meg, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. You and uh, uh, Noble kind of, he's got the, the pocket square, which I can appreciate, to kind of matches. So you guys are looking dapper together. Very nice. <laughs> Yes, he's doing the, he's got very cool pocket square, I must say. Uh, it's McIntyre Law Monday, as, as you all know, and today we are going to be talking about the duck boat incident, a tragedy, Noble, well, it's obviously. A, a tough, tough deal. We all saw it on the news. 17 people have died. There's two still in critical condition at the hospital. They may die as well. So it, it's, it's a very, very tragic deal that led to a tremendous amount of loss of life, including nine in one family. Um, and the issues here, what people are talking about most when you read about it online is, the liability issue, because the company that owns the boat duck company has said that the storm came out of nowhere. They did not know that it was coming. There was no way for them to foresee it. And if that were the case, is there liability there? And so you just have to look at the facts. And what the truth of the matter is, is that there was a warning six hours before the storm rolled in uh, that said the storm was coming. Everybody has an iPhone nowadays. You can look on the radar and see that it's coming. And so you have those issues. In addition to the company itself knew that these boats did not perform well in heavy weather. And so the survivors have said that typically you go into the water in the second half of the tour. They went into the water in the first half of the tour for one reason, because the storm was coming and they wanted to get that part out of the way. And so this company that made the decision to take these folks out into the water, uh, you also have some talk about there were life jackets on board, but they were told they weren't going to need them. Uh, and a whole host of other issues just buys this company into liability. There's nothing that can be done in a lawsuit that will get these folks back, but this company has in some serious trouble. And we're going to be talking about that. Also, we've learned that there are a number of cameras that were on this boat, so I'm sure right. those are being looked at as well. That's just going to add to all of this. Yeah, there's four to five cameras on the boat, and they have recovered the black box, which we'll talk a little bit about the engine revving and the things that were going on at that time. So more details are going to come in. It'll take about a year, the NTSB is saying, to finish the investigation, but by the time we're done, you're going to have a complete story of what happened. All right. So coming up in our next segment, we're going to be talking about that liability, go into a little bit more detail on some of those aspects. Right, Noble? Yes, we are. Okay. Mitch, back to you. All right. It's very important information there. Meg, thank you so much. We're going to be checking back with you in just a bit. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com on Twitter, at McIntyre Law, on Facebook, at Oklahoma Law. Back to Living Oklahoma. Let's check in with Meg. She is with attorney Noble McIntyre, and uh, we just had Joe Dorman on from the OICA, Meg, and it uh, actually is uh, fitting because one of the sponsors this year is that guy right next to you. Yeah, Noble McIntyre. You are uh, one of the sponsors for the Heroes Ball. I, I am. I am. That's coming up later this week, I think mm -hmm. on Friday, and it's a, it's a great cause. And I thought it would be something I would get involved in and help out a little bit. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you're always so involved in the community. We appreciate I, that, Noble. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've been following the duck boat incident, the tragedy that happened. Right. Um, as we know, many lives lost. And I think a lot of people now wondering how this is all going to play out. And, you know, the first thing you think of is, okay, the owners of this duck boat company, this could be a real issue as far as liability. But we're learning there could be a lot of people involved in the liability. There are. What people don't understand Ripley's of Ripley's in it believe it or not owns the duck boat company in Branson that owns the boat that was involved in this accident there are 106 of these boats in use around the country 22 of them in Branson the 22 in Branson were manufactured by a company called Ride Duck Boats International and what they did was they took these old military vehicles and they retrofitted them for use for the duck boat industry so they're from like World War II the or World War II or... troop transports yeah. uh -huh. well the NTSB which regulates National Traffic Safety Board regulates came out in 99 and told them you need to retrofit these because the canopy is a death trap. When they that fill was in up, 1999. 1999. When they fill up with water, if you have a life jacket on or even if you're inside, it forces you to the top and it's hard to get out. And this company has been aware of this for quite some time. And so the company has continued to seek uh, variations from the law and has continued to develop these boats and put them into the marketplace. Well, now here's exactly what happened. You're going to find that people were trapped against that canopy, which was a known design defect that they were warned about many, many years ago that they took no steps to fix. And so not only will Ripley's be sued in this case, which they just bought this duck company in December of last year. 
So, but not only will they be sued, but also Ride the Ducks International, the company that manufactures those, will be sued as well because they're putting vehicles out there with a known design defect. And there are going to be so many factors that play into this because, again, we talked about the weather situation. Right. They, they knew the weather was coming in. The boats do not do well out there when there's a lot of waves. In this case, if you've seen the videos, there were four and five foot waves that were hitting the side of the side of the boat, you know, vehicle boat, whatever you want to call it. And then there's other issues involved. The people that were in the boat may have had uninsured motorists on their own personal cars. So then the question becomes, well, if you use all the insurance, can somebody use UM from their car since this was technically a car when it was on the road, but it was a boat when it was on the water? Oh. And do you have car laws or do you have maritime laws since it was a boat case? And so there'll be many, many issues you have to go through when this litigation gets filed and there'll be more than one defendant. Oh my gosh. I mean, I know it's going to be very interesting and I'm getting, it's just so tragic. I mean, you can't, no matter what happens here, right. you can't bring those people no, back. You, you can't. It's, it's just, it's just a horrible deal all the way around. All right. We're going to continue talking about this in our next segment on McIntyre Law Monday. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyre Law, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. And with Meg, she's with attorney Noble McIntyre. Meg. Hi, Mitch. And we do continue McIntyre Law Monday. We've been talking about that duck boat tragedy in Branson. And what we're learning is there's the company, right. uh, Ride the Ducks International. International. They actually take these old World War II uh, vehicles and they repurpose them right. for this transport of tourists and such. And there's some design defects, and we're there, learning about that. There, there are. You know, a lot of people are looking at this case thinking just the company that owned the duck boats in Branson is going to be on the hook for the liability. Which is Ripley's. Which is Ripley's of Ripley's, it, believe it or not. Right, right. But there's more to it. Yeah, Ride the Ducks International is the company that takes these old military vehicles that are now surplus and they repurpose them for use in this industry, of which there are 106 of them around the country. This is the fourth fatality for this company, fourth fatality accident for this company, just in the last six to seven years. And in 2015, the government fined them $1 million for an accident that killed five people in Seattle. And they did a full study, and they found that of the 106 boats that had been manufactured and repurposed by this company, 105 of them were not in compliance with the federal safety traffic rules. Okay, so how are they How are they still out there? Well, they paid their fine, and then what they did is they have either fixed some of them, but for most of them, they have actually sought waivers from the rules that were required by the NTSB. They've gone to the Trump administration, in this case, previously the Obama administration, and they've said, look, we need more time. Will you give us some waivers? And specifically, some of the defects are the can which we talked mm -hmm. about, which can be a death trap. Well, the company doesn't want to remove the canopy because that's what provides shade on hot days, and they feel like their business would go down if people were sitting and baking in the hot sun. And so they have sought waivers that have said, we do not want to remove these canopies. Yes, we understand the NTSB is saying they're a death trap and they're very dangerous, but we think that we can work around them. And so they just pushed the ball out a while. And so what's happened is now we've had another fatality, and in this case, 17 people. Well, and there are other things, too. We talked about the window. The windows in most of these are sealed. In this case, if you've seen the videos, the windows are up. Uh -huh. And so what happens is then when the water starts to come in, the people can't get the windows down in time to get out. And then the life jackets, which are stored above you, all these boat captains are being told to tell people, look, you're not going to need them. You're not mm -hmm. going to need They're them. They're here, but They're you're here not going to need them. And there are some experts that say that even if you have put them on, that's even more dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's the reason on an airplane when they say, you know, don't inflate your life vest until you're outside the airplane. If we go down in the water, it's because if it's inflated, and you get pushed up to the ceiling, now you're having to swim against the buoyancy of the life jacket to get down three or four feet to get out the window. And so it's it's a tough, tough design defect for which this company is well aware. And you'd also talked about where the driver is seated. Is is about six to eight feet below the bow of the front end of the vehicle. And so it's difficult for the driver to see a lot of things, which in the water it's not so much, but on the highway the reason they've had some accidents is they can't see as well at the front end of their vehicle and they actually can run over people, which is different than our vehicles that we drive every day. And so, you know, these vehicles were never designed for this. They were designed for troop transport. They did not have the canopy on top. They've been repurposed for a design that's fun, but mm -hmm. it's dangerous. Well, there is no doubt there are going to be some lawsuits involved there in are. this. And coming up in the next segment, we're going to be talking about perhaps what some of those may involve in damages. Damages, absolutely. That's next. 
McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyreLaw, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. Well, there is more to live in Oklahoma this Monday morning. You better not go anywhere. If you dare, you mesh out on all of it. All right, stick around. Welcome back. It's quarter to the hour. Meg has been hanging out with attorney Noble McIntyre all morning long. Let's go to her right now, Meg. Hey, Mitch, it's McIntyre Law Monday. We've been following the duck boat tragedy, the legal mm -hmm. ramifications and 17 lives lost right. here. Now we're talking about the damage part of this. And this this is that's, a, you know, a hard one because you know, it, how it do you is. put the amount on a life? Well, you know, first of all, anytime somebody hires me, mm -hmm. it, it's all I've ever done my entire 25 year career is represent people who have been injured or the families of folks that have been killed in an accident. And you're, you're often asking, well, is there enough money out there? Is there enough insurance to cover this? And in this case, you have 17 mm -hmm. fatalities. And don't forget, you have two people still in the hospital with critical condition that may live or may die. And so is there enough insurance? And if there is, what are the amount of damages that you could be expecting in this type of case? And the easiest answer is everybody's different. Not all of these cases are worth exactly the same, even though 17 people have died. And the reason is, is that under the elements of damage, some people have economic loss, which are lost wages and things like that if they're working. Well, a one-year-old that died doesn't have that, and the retired folks that died don't have that. So right there, you have a difference in the amount of damages. 
Then you have life expectancy. It's sad to say, but an 80-year-old person under the life expectancy charts is not worth the same as a 15-year-old because the 15-year-old was going to live much, much longer, at least on the government guidelines, than somebody who's already 80. And so when a jury or when a settlement is taking place, those things get looked at as well. And so mm -hmm. you've got the economic side of it, and then you have the non-economic side of it, which is just what's a life worth? You know, I mean, what, what do you give for somebody that's died and for their family member and the grief that the family's gone through? And then after you do all of that, if there's enough insurance, and there probably is in this case because Ripley's is a large company and you're going to bring, bring in Ride Deducts International, but are there any damages that aren't covered by insurance? Punitive damages, which are not covered by insurance. Well, when would punitive damages come into play? Well, if a company does something that is foreseeable or reckless and they do it anyway and put somebody at risk or danger and an accident happens and somebody gets killed, then you've got punitive damages that a jury can award. And punitive damages typically aren't covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. So now that comes out of the company coffers, the money. And that's where the big money comes from. In fact, if you've been watching the news lately, you saw that in St. Louis last week, you had this big talcum powder verdict where Mark Lanier, who's a good friend of mine, a lawyer down in Houston, he got $500 million for 22 mm -hmm. women that had cancer mm -hmm. from talcum powder, mm -hmm. but then the jury gave a $4 billion punitive award. Well, in this case, you could conceivably have a million dollar verdict for the one year old, but then a $10 million punitive on top of that. So the amount of damages these companies are looking at when you add in the punitives are going to be astronomical. Oh my gosh. And of course, we have this one woman who lost nine families. Nine members. families, three children of her own and her husband. So think about that. She's now going home to a quiet house mm -hmm. for the rest of her life. And so she's lost her three kids, but then beyond that, multiple other family members, nine family members from one family. I mean, it's just, it's just unconscionable. So question, I, and I don't know, if they sign the waiver before right. they get on this, how does that hold up in something like this? Well, in something like this, I mean, there's clearly the waivers do come into play if a company's doing everything right. Mm -hmm. but. A one-year-old can't sign a waiver, and there's arguments and laws that a parent can't sign away the rights of their minor children, which is why I have successfully had cases where a parent signed a waiver for a minor, and we were able to get around that because the minor didn't sign it, and a parent can't sign away the rights of somebody else. So there may be some battles about the waivers, but if these companies are smart, they're not going to fight that too hard because if they lose that battle, which they probably will, the jury's going to hear about that somehow, and that's going to make the punitive aspect even larger. So that will certainly be something that has to be battled in court. I don't think it's going to come out on the sides of the company. I think at the end of the day, there's going to be some very, very large settlements or some verdicts that are very, very large. Unfortunately, it's not going to bring anybody back. No. Well, I know the news will be following this, right. and uh, you'll keep us posted as well on the legal side. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. On this McIntyre Law Monday. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyre Law, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. Tire, what you got going on, Meggers? Well, I can't keep up with Noble. The, the guy is so busy, but uh, you are sponsoring an event coming up, the I Heroes am, Ball? the Heroes Ball, the Oklahoma Child Advocacy. So, you know, helping some of these kids who don't have the same access to things maybe we did as a kid. And so it's a big event they do every year. It's going to be this Friday at the Skirvin, and I'm an awards level sponsor. I think that's the ten thousand yeah. dollar level. I'm not oh, sure. Oh yeah. But it's it's you know it's another great cause. It's like the it's like the turkey thing we do every yeah. year. It's it's giving back to the community and trying to do something. You know, just to bring and make others better, and so it's just it's something I'm looking forward to. And we just had Joe Dorman on the show today, so that okay, fits great. perfectly great. Yeah, with that. There you go. Um, also, it's hard to you know because it's been so hot, but football season's right around the football corner. Football season coming around the corner, and I, you know I'm a huge Oklahoma fan. I'm sponsoring the entire first game, and so I will have I'll be interviewed at halftime. I'll be down on the field, but it's just my way to get back to the University of Oklahoma, which is where I went to law school. And so I think Lincoln Riley's going to have a great year. I'm going to miss Baker Mayfield, but uh, I think that we're going have a very good season. Of course, I go into every year thinking Oklahoma's going to win the whole thing. You're an ultimate optimist. I, I, am. I love I am. that about you. Well, we've had a great time on our McIntyre Law Monday. Thank you, Noble. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Mitch, let's head back to you in studio. All righty. I'm still looking forward to Noble hanging out with you at one of those games. All right. Uh, again. 
McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyreLaw, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law.